Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. This is one of the most interesting papers that I've come across very recently. And I'm very surprised not a lot of people are talking about. This is a paper from Meta AI. What they're trying to do is they're trying to read your brain signals and then decode into speech. I don't have to speak. For example, let's say I have a disability and I cannot speak. I just said, even when I do not speak, they can decode my brain signals to just get the right English or right sound or right speech, what I would have spoken. When I read this paper, like I was completely mind blown because this is completely non-invasive. So most of the techniques that are currently available, BCI, brain computer interface, any of this brain computer interface technique mostly requires invasive technology. So if you have heard Elon Musk talking about neural link, they have to like put a chip inside your brain. They have to operate it like skull or something like that they have to do and they have to put the chip inside it. But if you have to record the brain signal without having an invasive technique, so you have like two major ways. One is MEG. The second one is EEG, magnetic encephalography, electroencephalography. So these put like, uh, you know, a couple of sensors up on your head and then they record the brain signal. What these researchers on Meta AI has managed to do is they've used these signals to actually match with the speech audio, the relevant speech audio. It's quite mind blowing what they've managed to do in this paper. So let's get started with this paper. It's called Decoding Speech Perception from Non-Invasive Brain Recordings. This paper is also published on Nature. So you can go ahead and then see it. And uh, the same copy has been available on RK for you to read it if you want the free access. So this is from meta.com, meta AI. So what are they trying to do? Decoding speech from brain activity is a long awaited goal in both healthcare and neuroscience. Quite, quite interesting. What they are trying to do here is we introduce a model trained with contrastive learning. We'll quickly see what does it mean to decode self-supervised representations of perceived speech from the non-invasive recordings of a large cohort of healthy individuals. That's one important thing. Most of the existing researchers around decoding speech is targeted at patients. But what they have decided to do in this paper is instead of looking at patients, they have decided to do whatever they want to do with healthy volunteers so that they can probably in the future expand this technology into patients. But right now, everything on this paper particularly focuses on healthy volunteers, like healthy individuals who can talk and also probably like have brain waves. To evaluate this approach, you curate and integrate four public data sets. La 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 la. So the result shows that our model can identify from three seconds of MEG signal, magnetic, magnetic, magnetic encephalography, mag, magneto, magneto encephalography, MEG signals. From a three seconds of MEG signals, it can correctly match the corresponding speech segment with up to 41% accuracy out of more than 1000 distinct possibility across uh, pay participants and more than 80% in the very best participants. So you can see across participants like approximately at least like 40% it can do good, but in the best participant it can do 80%. That is, that is, um, that is quite an amazing accuracy. A performance that allows the decoding of words and phrases even absent from the training set. So even in the training set, if the words did not exist still, they could do it. The comparison of our model variety baselines highlights importance of three different things. If this, if this is like one thing that you want to take from this paper, that is like these three things that they're introducing. The first one is a contrastive objective. The second one is a pre-trained representations of speech. And the third one is a common convoluted architecture simultaneously trained across multiple participants. So now leaving this, let's get started with one by one. First thing, what they're saying, this is a model trained with contrastive learning. If you are not familiar with this thing, mostly if you have been seeing our channel, you would have heard about something called clip. Clip is a model that was introduced or at least like popularized by OpenAI sometime back, which became the base for even stable diffusion. So clip stands for contrastive language image pre-training. So what happens in clip is that you take images, you take text and then you pair them together and then you try to train them in such a way that 
the similar ones are together the dissimilar ones are farther that's what you're trying to do here so that is what is happening in the clip if you even go see here so you have got a text encoder you've got an image encoder then you have got a matrix and then the similar ones go together the dissimilar ones go farther this way the text and then the relevant image goes together so now imagine instead of image and text you have got brain waves and you have got speech that's exactly what they're doing if you go to the paper you would see a very similar setup you have got speech and then you have got brain waves and you would see like a very similar picture that you just saw here so you have got like i1 and t1 here which is image and text and then here you would see zn and y1 or z1 and y1 the z component is uh, the component that is coming from the brain module and then the y component is coming from the speech i guess yeah and uh, it goes inside the zero shot classification decoding finally that says this is closer to this this speech module is closer to this uh, brain signal so now before even moving into it that is the first part the contrastive learning part so what they have done is they when they started this model initially they started it with a very supervised model approach in machine learning classical machine learning supervised model means the model is being trained to predict yes or no or it has been trained to predict particularly exact one thing like you know you already tell the model what to do it so for that they have used something like uh, a regression loss so initially that's how they started with so they said okay this is like a normal regression kind of a problem we can formulate so we will go ahead with the regression problem and what this image actually shows is that this is a mel spectrogram so you take the audio signal and you like the audio signal for mel spectrogram this is thank you for coming ed so when you take the audio and then you take like a mel spectrogram this is how it looks so when they when they try to reconstruct that first one is b the second one is c the third one is their current model what they're using d so what are the differences the first one b is a mel spectrogram predicted with direct regression loss so anytime you build a machine learning model or a deep learning model you need to have some kind of a loss function that would optimize the model process like the gradients and all the other things towards that one particular goal like minimizing that one particular thing they started with a direct regression loss and you can see how these two are similar not very much right so of course if you see this thing it doesn't have these kind of patterns here it still captures some essence but it doesn't do a good job of trying to replicate it as much as it can so that is the first one then they decided to replace the regression loss with a clip loss that is a contrastive learning part where you know you have got the contrastive learning aspect where you pair these things together and then have the similar ones uh, with a um, closer relation the similar ones for the relation and when they did that you can see the base one plus clip so first one the regression loss which now replacing with the clip loss it is more closer this is better than this you can see when you see this it has this texture here previously it did not have the texture there and then finally what they did is now they're going to replace the mel spectrogram with wave 2 vec 2 if you are following this channel for a very long time even before generative ai took off wave 2 vec 2 came from facebook and we covered on this channel even how to use wave 2 vec 2 we covered on this channel so i'll try to link the video in the youtube description so wave two, including wave 2 vec 2 which is like a self supervised uh, system for a voice or a text a speech uh, encoding and generation so if you see that now this is a massive improvement from what it looks like so even though it doesn't look exactly like the mel spectrogram what they have managed to do is they've managed to take the audio the 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 wave to vec 2 audio and they have tried to replace the mel spectrogram with, with the wave to vec 2 so instead of using the mel spectrogram the true mel spectrogram from the audio they have decided to use wave to vec 2 and that has finally given them a very good base model which we just saw that 40% across participants and 80% accuracy with the best participant and other than that they have also done one another very important thing which is creating a convoluted neural architecture called brain module so that is the architecture that you are seeing the most important part in this architecture is if you see the subject layer so the subject layer what it does is a, it's it's a subject layer 
based on the subject like based on a particular individual they have built the subject layer that is one thing that i did not understand completely so if you ever go through this paper please let me know one thing so what i still did not understand completely is that if they actually built one model or what they, if they had like a unique subject layer for a unique subject and i was wondering how would that scale so that is something that i did not understand completely so if you happen to read the paper let me know in the comment section but that is something that they have done um so for example here the spatial attention is what so when you do the meg or eeg electroencephalography or magnetoencephalography you're going to have a lot of sensors so this is basically taking all the sensor value and projecting in a particular space like the two 270 here indicates like what is the space in which they are projecting it's a very interesting paper so you can see here the brain data is first remapped onto 270 channels with spatial attention so mainly if you see this paper it has like the three important modules the first one is what we just saw here the replacing the regression loss with the contrastive or clip loss the second one is replacing the true mel spectrogram with the wave to wave to the self supervised model and then the third one is having like the brain module the custom made convoluted neural architecture with the subject layer is what makes their their system like the system that they have a very very interesting system like you can see and uh, you can go ahead and then read most of the other parts of the paper it uh, requires a little bit of you know understanding about like classical deep learning but if you understand that you will understand like most of the things that are available here let's quickly jump into the result section and if you see the result section our model predicts the correct segment out of more than 1000 possibilities with the top 10 accuracy up to 70% on average across meg subjects so if you see this table you have got the eeg eeg benchmark and meg and meg benchmark the first one is a random model this is the baseline so if you don't do all of these things you just randomly use something and then try to predict what is the baseline that is what this is i mean this is like you know you toss a coin you get like 50% 50% so almost that kind of concept here so you've got a random base mo random model and this is the base model the base model is one what they were using before with the regression loss and then they replaced it with the clip one and they also tried one more thing called deep mel so we didn't go deeper into it that is the true uh, mel spectrogram one and then finally they replaced it with wave to wave two and when you see the one that they replaced it with wave to wave two already you might observe something very interesting what is that the eeg benchmarks have got 25% and 17% accuracy while the meg benchmarks have got 70% and 67% accuracy so this also poses a very interesting question if meg will help you better decode the brain signals into speech or align it with speech than your eeg signals so they've got a separate section that discusses about uh, is meg better than eeg and how the past research might have got benefited from one of these like you are a researcher you decide to use meg maybe your results were better you are a researcher you decided to use eeg or eeg readings your results were not very good so they 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 are discussing this while these results should confirm by using the same stimuli to the participants recorded either with eeg or meg they suggest that the difference of decoding performance observed between studies is mainly driven by the type of the device i mean it's um, it's it's quite funny um, when i when i see these kind of things i don't know how many of you know this there was a there was a machine learning model that was built to actually detect you know a particular type of dog and uh, this is particular type of dog that stays in snow and when they use the machine learning model to in the real world production they figured out that the model did not do good why they re they realized that the, the model did not actually learn to predict the dog which dog it is the model tried to learn whether snow was present in the image or not so whenever you had the same dog without snow the model did not do good so this is a very classical example of how machine learning models learn something completely different and this is like one of those things right so the studies results were driven by the type of disease the performance than actually what the algorithm that they built so but this is a separate section altogether and if you are quite interested in learning more about the speech model uh, module that uh, we talk about here where they use wave to wave to and you can go ahead and then see like how all those things change and how having a eeg you know the top 10 accuracy looks like top 1 accuracy looks like 
and all these kind of things that you can go here and then see it. So the most important thing, if you want to take away from this, the three things, the contrast of learning and uh, the wave to wave to replacing the true male, uh, true male spectrogram. And the final one is the, 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 the custom built convoluted neural architecture with the subject layer that is um, very subject defined, but also, you know, a train across uh, volunteers who volunteered and you can see the word level predictions as well how this is for a particular given word even when it was not available part of the training data set how when they used it with somebody else it uh, it kind of, how when they used it with somebody who sp tried to speak something that was not part of the training data set still it managed to find it's a very interesting paper honestly speaking i'm not like a complete expert in all of this i'm not an expert in neuroscience something that i've been thinking to spend a lot of time in reading but um, of course it's very hard to spend a lot of time in reading something new but this is an amazing paper and um, i i guess like we should truly appreciate the fact that they've also managed to share the code so you can go to this github repository and then you can actually see the entire thing and you can run the code yourself. So this, this has got like uh, all the details that you want to run it and then see how it works. It is quite impressive that they decided to share everything meta AI. So once again, trying to put research uh, at the front and uh, pushing boundaries. So this is the paper that talks about decoding speech perceptions from non-invasive brain recordings. And um, I'm truly impressed by this paper. Let me know in the comment section, what do you feel about it? If you have any questions, happy to answer. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.